it's you know what it is? It's like what they were afraid of with pirate radio, where everyone can have their own radio station. Yeah. You know, they wanted to control that and regulate yeah, that. They can't no more. You know? no. But now uh, podcast is way more pervasive than even just regular pri- pi- pirate radio because you can listen to it when there's no radio signal. You can listen to it on an iP- iPad or an iPhone rather, and 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 keep that shit you know in the gym. You could you could listen to it on planes. You could listen to it. You know, you can have an iPod and, and take it with you in the bathroom if you want to. You could go swimming with those fucking. They have waterproof iPod containers. You can listen to that shit while you're swimming, you know? Yeah. You need a reality show. That's what you need, dude. You're a weirdo. You're an interesting motherfucker. People would like to, I, would like I, to watch you. I do you. have one. I do have one. I know, but I I'm saying you need one on TV. Someone needs to snatch that shit up and just follow you around with professional cameras and shit. I mean, the thing that you're doing on Mastering the System is cool, and it's, it's letting people know. On but, no budget, on yeah. zero budget. I mean, I, you know, there's a little budget. I am paying someone to put it together, but it's like minimal shit, you know what I mean? If there was some kind of budget, it would be nice. Where I could have someone, where I could just tell someone to do anything, like a, like a producer dude, and I go, I want this, I want that. Once I get to the point where I have a guy that will just do everything that I say, and I could afford to pay him, or someone else is paying him, once then everything's going to go smooth. Right. Because yeah. there's so much shit I want to do, I just don't have time to do everything, man. Right. You know, I, every day is packed with shit. Yeah. Every, and I'm not even trying, just every day, is just packed. Me too, I'm man. so busy. Yeah. Well, the good thing is you're doing everything you want to do. That's what, you know, the, the, the key to a happy life is even though you're busy, you're still busy with things that you enjoy. Yeah, I'm not you know? complaining at all, man. Every day, I, every day I love my life, man. I'm not complaining. I'm just really busy. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to, you know, you know, I got to calm myself down and counsel myself. Dude, you're a lucky motherfucker. Smile. You should be laughing right now. You should be enjoying the moment right now. What the fuck are you doing stressing about this and stressing about that? Forget about that. I got to, every day I got to Yeah, know, but I that, myself that, that stress though is also what keeps you pushing forward. That's what makes you, what motivates you. That same drive, even though sometimes it frustrates you out. It's all this energy that you built up to try to become successful. It's very hard to become successful and be really laid back at the same time. And a lot of times people just don't push far enough. It's just you got to learn when to chill out and when not to. But in order to really push forward, you got to be pretty intense, you know, to really get shit done. There's no way to just, it's hard to be laid back and to get shit done, you know. You got to get, got to gear yeah. up, you know. That's crazy, man. It's yeah. crazy shit. It's all good stuff, though. What's going on with you, Brian? What's the latest? Mm. What's tired. With you? <laughs> you're tired? Why are you tired? Just doing a lot of work. Been really busy. Like you look like you're in better shape. Been, oh, you've been working out? No, it's fucking. He's been fucking and eating bananas. Yeah. Look at him. So I see him and Goddamn pussy. monkey. You can start a new diet, dude. <laughs> dude this is what he does. The, the, the fucking gorilla diet. Just funk, fucking eat bananas. All he but does you gotta is fuck three times a he day. drinks sparkling water and he eats bananas and he fucks. And every now and then he goes to Starbucks. Dude, that's the gorilla diet right there. I am. I've been, you can make I'm an been, infomercial. I've been reading the Pallian whatever diet. Paleo, <laughs> you fuck. <laughs> You should, Italian. You know, shoot, a little, <laughs> shoot a little commercial parody. Shoot a little commercial parody, dude. You and Duncan, shoot that. That would be fucking great. Your diet. It's just soda water, like Perrier, bananas, and fucking, dude. Yeah. That would be a funny and video. And on Sunday, you could have champagne. If you, this is what you, this is your workout routine. <laughs> this is what it. you do. That's all you need. And you just show it. Like, dip, you got you to gotta spend 10 minutes doggy, 10 minutes fucking. You, There's you a lot of hard. aerobic activity and some, some serious <laughs> fucking. You know, if you really she's got to be on top. Down, that's, that's your, you that's your, that's your 10 minutes of rest. Little. She's got to be on top and she's got to keep moving. And you got to at least thrust the hips. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, you can't just lay there that's like your a cool slob. Down round. Yeah. And you got to go hard. You got to work. You gotta grab her ass too. And you know what's a great thing? Go to work. You, 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 you go to work. Do, 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 you're, uh, do, do. you're working on lasting longer, so the girl benefits too. So you get more girls. They want to come back because you're on this diet. They, they want to come don't back. Give a fuck. They, they want to come back go. like you're a ride at Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You're a fucking machine. You go 45 minutes on that bitch. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? When was the last time you fucked for 45 minutes? Yes, then last night. Did you do it well, or did you cry a lot? Awesome. You think people no, would do you cry at all? Great. It's great. It's great. <laughs> after you come once, did you cry at all? After you, after you come once, and then He's you go back my question. having sex, uh, like like five minutes later, then it's like you don't really have to come again, but your dick's still hard, so it's great. Will the would so women? It's like, there's no you, into it. You, you sound like you might be. Fuck. This is a, you're in a new relationship right now. We should stipulate that Brian may be uh, starting out with a pace that he can't keep up. That's uh-huh. true. Hey, would a woman complain <laughs> that, that you're, she's only, you're only fucking her because you're on this fucking diet? You're, you're only fucking me because it's on the fucking diet. If you were on the fucking diet, you wouldn't be fucking me. You should right? t- stop talking to that girl. She sounds like Eddie. Just sounded oh, right there. she does not sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk to a girl like that, okay? Those bitches are crazy. So uh, this weekend, we've got Joey Diaz next. Yes. Are you excited <laughs> to do the next podcast with Joey? Always this is a video, motherfucker. Always People excited are... with Joey Diaz. Bam. So- 
Why don't we worry about the other guy goddamn Portland? This motherfucker. We're high, and he starts talking about earthquakes that are going to happen because Brian's cat's retarded. <laughs> what kind of logic is this? A dog starts digging when there's a fucking earthquake. If you, these cats are the sweetest cats in the world. They're very chill, these cats. If they're acting kind of jumpy, something's going on. We've both been here before. They're not uncomfortable with us. Maybe a little tremor is coming. Maybe a little tremor. Listen, the big one's going to hit San Francisco way before it hits us. That's the one. You're a fucking geologist? I'm just feeling this. I'm just well, dropping this today. You, know you know so much. Why didn't you make a phone call to Japan? Because I didn't know that much at the time. I've just been thinking about it ever since Japan. It's just the odds now. We've already hit every fucking earthquake locale. What's the flex? How many cigarettes are you smoking these days, man? Are you just back now, to smoking just, cigarettes? No, no, no. I'm getting dizzy already. Dizzy really? Right? Yeah, I got dizzy. Well, I just smoked one just to get the party started. Oh, well, good sight. It gets the party started? Yeah, I make sure the lungs are intact. <laughs> I'm at the gym doing jumping jacks. I thought you just needed an invitation. I, I, I got to make sure that these fucking lungs are working. What do I go to the gym for and do all this shit if I can't puff? I got to test them. It is sort of like weightlifting for your lungs. You think about it that it's way. It's like a little quick test. What the fuck is cigarettes? It's nothing better for you. Hey, folks. You want to see Brian's dirty laundry? Oh, no. That's right here, This is where he folds it, too. It's <laughs> And when he wants to get crazy, he goes skateboarding. <laughs> Simpson style, around the neighborhood. Sure, give a fuck. <laughs> See more to your door. No beef, no more. Where did that come from? You couldn't smoke enough fucking weed to get that line. <laughs> See more to your door. See more somebody's name. Yeah. He just threw it out. See more to your door. No beef, no more, nigga. Feel the rush. Dangerous. The more weed I smoke, the puff, the more danger. Stop. That's what I'm talking about. I hear Stop. you. By the way, another, I agree 100%. another drop for you people. I, I dropped it before Havana Nocturne, PJ English. He got another book out that's killing motherfuckers. And we go right to New York Times number one, Savage City. New York City, 1970s, with the brothers and everything. They got a picture of fucking Tupac's mother in there with the Black Panthers carrying a fucking militant gun like Fidel, 58. God damn. Really? Good book. Yeah, very good book. I read like two chapters to the next. I can't read any more books, man. I got no more space. I got no more space on my hard drive. I don't want to delete any information. I really think about that now. I'm, I look at new TV shows, like some new DVD, like I was looking at Waking Dead, you know, or Walking Dead, whatever the fuck it is, and they had a DVD out. I'm like, man, I heard that was a good series. I don't have no room for that shit. I have no room in my brain, man. I, I don't even remember Dexter. I remember I, I liked the first season. I don't remember anything more about it. I just, I'm deleting shit left and right, man. I got no room. You know what I'm talking about? Bro, I'm with you, you know what I'm saying? Between the weed, the cats, the fucking podcast life, yeah. You gotta delete sometimes. I just started taking this stuff called 5-HTP. It's supposed to increase so your really mental function. Increase your mental function. You take it? No, I take the shit Kubiak said. What's his name? Your boy Romanowski's got some new shit. Oh, that shit. The, the, um, what was that called? The liquid uh, cocaine. That you want neuro, to about? neuro One. Yeah. yeah. So I have a bowl of that shit at home. Nelson sent me something the other day. Yeah. I smoked it. Tremendous. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's like supplements smoke. just for the brain. You don't you smoke. You smoke it? No, you mix it with orange. Don't smoke. Don't smoke. It's just jokes, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. Oh, shit. Okay, cool. Tape. Hey, buddy. Yeah, I can go right out into them and start taking pictures. Greetings here from the Joe Rogan Experience Comedy Minute. This week we're going to talk about the Angel Salazar breakdown, as they call it the meltdown up in Rochester. Angel Salazar plays Chi Chi and Scarface. Very funny guy. He's been around for a while, but it's the last of the real Mohicans. You got Tracy Morgan, you got a couple people, but Angel is it. So they got two shows on a Friday and a Saturday night. Angel does the first show, standing ovation, no worries. He goes to the owner and he goes, Listen, I want to take a nap. In between shows, the owner says, all right, go in the green room. I'll wake you up by a quarter to ten. Quarter to ten. Angel, no angel. Ten o'clock. Angel, no angel. Ten after. Angel. They finally take the screws off the door and the doorknob. They push the door and there's Angel with his underwear with, like, makeup on. With, like, red shit coming out of his nose. And it's all pasty. So the owner thought the angel OD'd. So he picked him up by his ankles and he wakes him up. And he's like, Angel. And Angel's like, what, man? I'm Tony Montana. What the fuck? I did the first show. And he's like, Angel, you got to do another show. And he's like, what show are you talking about? Where am I? He goes, Angel, you got to do a show. 
So he got he got Angel, he got dressed, he put Angel in his little costume. Born in the USA, Angel comes out. <laughs> he goes up there, this is the song, he has not changed his act in 20 years. Not even a peep, he has not even had a tag. He still comes out to Born to the USA. That song came out in 1980 fucking four, you understand me? So he's up there. And he's, he's forgetting the lyrics to his own song, right, that he wrote, Born in the USA and all this. Five minutes go by, he's up there fucking hammering, telling everybody he's Tony Montana, Pacino is just a, a double, that he was the original Scarface, he still has blow and all this shit. Finally, there's a chick in the first row with big titties with her family. He sits on a lap and starts kissing the titties, and people start booing him. So he gets back on stage, he's like, fuck you guys, I take you all to hell. And he went to sit down, dog, and he just went like this. He sat down, Joe Rogan. He goes, I thank you all the help. <laughs> passed on. And that's what they had to get. On stage. On stage. They had to get the money back and everything. Let's do what they did. They took all his props, put him in his Jeep, and they took him and put him in his Jeep, and they locked the door outside the hotel room. The next day, they got a call at 6 in the morning. Angel's like, what happened last night? They're like, Angel, bro, you had a meltdown. Angel's like, no, 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 no. The owner gave me a roofie because he didn't want to pay me. He goes, that's what happened. The owner put a roofie in my drink because he didn't want to pay me. I know. So no one knows what he did. <coughs> I called the Angel Salas off meltdown. How long ago was that? Three, four months ago. Wow. Angel Salazar has been a road warrior for a long time. When you're out there doing the road like he's doing the road, you you don't really have a place to live. Or if you do, you're never there. You're just going from one spot to the next, going and doing whatever the fuck anybody's got. We got heroin, you got meth, you got coke. Yeah. Hey, wait for him. The drug dealers call the club, wait for him. <laughs> you have no fucking idea, man. He's like, he has his little uh, uh, array of room where they just wait for him. They just wait for him. He comes to town. It's fucking nuts. Let's do this, son. Hi. We're on our way to the Portland Helium. There's two Heliums, Philly and Portland. Never been to fucking Portland. It's brand new, right? Yeah, brand new. Appreciate it. Before I come on stage, I'm going to bring up two of my best friends on the planet. This first guy, you might know him from the longest yard. You might know him from the Beauty and the Beast podcast. From my podcast. He's the funniest fucking human being on the planet. Please give it up for Mr. Joey. Come on, be it. Do it again. Y'all want to keep it down in there? <laughs> Damn, what y'all crying about? <sighs> Man, can't believe I got to deal with this. I'm going to say my name, my name, my name, for the podcast. Give us some love. Bring it back. Give us some love. Give us some love. Give You too, cocksucker. I'm fucking drunk, Jack. Who's there? Who's that? Taylor. Is you, Taylor?
Come back, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Come back. <laughs> Just come back. I don't ask for much. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> you left the water on. <laughs> Get away from me. Hey. <laughs> Chicken and waffles. All you Portland cocksuckers, you know. <laughs> Chicken drunk. And why do you fucking leave? Fuck you all. Chicken and you 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 were blaming What the fuck guy? <laughs> Don't make me sing a Katy Perry song, I'm ready. <laughs> I start singing a Katy Perry song when I have some problems and shit. <laughs> First of all, Portland is the shit. This town is awesome. This is one of the coolest, most positive, most fun crowds we've ever had. Never has anyone handed me more weed in any town, anywhere. There's not even a close second. Portland dominated in the weed passing out department. Not even close. And the crowds were cool as fuck. And what we're seeing for sure this weekend is that we're getting podcast fans now. It's like almost all podcast fans. We saw that last week in Seattle, although Joey could attend because of previous warrants. We're probably we're gonna get that one taken care of. We're gonna contact our legal representatives and see what the fuck's going down. But uh, Portland was the shit, man. This is uh, on a short list, man. As far as like badass cool cities for me, this is on a short list. This is like Austin, Texas. Portland is right the fuck up there with Austin, in my opinion. Don't you think? Mm-hmm. Definitely. People are cool as fuck here. And the, the podcast crowds are this is a different crowd, man. We're getting a different crowd now. We're getting they're all fucking nice, man. This is one thing that waitresses say, and they've all oh, they've been saying this for a long time, but even more so now. Like today they, they kept going on about how friendly the people are. You know, that to me is almost more satisfying than anything else. The fact they're loving the show, the fact they're coming, they're having a great time. That's all great, but what really makes me feel good is that I hear that they're nice. I hear that the crowd. Wasn't one problem this weekend. Not one problem. Not one problem this weekend. No. Look at the shape of me. You guys smoked me the fuck out. <laughs> This was, you guys cheating and challenging me to death this week. <laughs> I mean, uh, it was just a great, great shows, great crowds. We just discussed the staff at the club. It's world fucking class. And I mean, uh, they left us alone. That's why the shows were so great. There was no drama. So thank you very much, Paul. It was amazing. And what was crazy is how many people, like, came up to us and said, uh, like, you know, you really make it my day so much better. I'm just driving. I'm doing these, like, hard jobs or manual labor jobs. And it, it makes just, it enjoyable. Yeah, it makes, it, they love it. How many people did we talk to that's like, you're changing my life. You change the way we think. You change, you know, I mean, we keep hearing that same thing, that same theme over and over again. You know, I'm like, I'm hanging out with you guys, and I'm thinking like you guys, and I'm, I'm thinking positive, and I'm trying to enjoy my time here and surround myself with friends who are, are like-minded, you know? It's the most important thing you can do. Be, be positive, have fun, enjoy your time, be fun to be around, surround yourself with other people that are, are the same way, and every day you're laughing. Look at us. Joe Diaz, every day, are, are we laughing? We're laughing. Like every friends. day we're laughing. I was laughing fun. on stage. I couldn't even laugh anymore on stage. Uh, how fun the, the crowds were. The crowds were so when fantastic. When you make me laugh, I, I make you laugh. So, I mean, I can't, I, I really am blown away. I'm, I'm wasted. They were so I happy drank, to see I drank everything. You know, I had a drink. What did you think, dude? Because you, this was the first time where you got on stage, you got some roars, dude. Yeah. They were like happy to see you. breaks. Yeah, it was. I can't see your face under your little crazy hat. It was so amazing. It was, it was, uh, it was insane how awesome, like, the crowd reminded me a lot of Texas. Like, yeah. Just, like, really happy to see comedy. And yeah. It, like, a lot of people came out for after the show and was just like, you know, we never have experienced comedy like this before. We never were into stand-up comedy or anything. This was, like, all new to us. And well, Joe, that's one of the, the unique things about this town. Joey could tell you, you know the history of this place. Well, I used to come down here in the, in the, in the late 90s, and it was Harvey's. 
And Harvey's was a good club, but there's too many restrictions. You can't curse. So just a, a certain amount of comic. The only dirty comic that had one week of dirty comedy was James Inman and Doug Stanhope and me. That's it. And they thought that was like crazy. <laughs> you know, I had to play the drums or be a magician. So when, when, uh, when uh, Helium opened, they brought a different type of comic up here, which opened up the door for a lot of different comics that wouldn't be allowed to come up here because of the budget restrictions of Harvey's or whatnot. And I'll tell you, man, one of the reasons why I hate traveling is because of the clubs fucking with you. This club in the city was out, outrageous. That's how they are in Philly, too. You know, outrageous. Philly's incredible. Outrageous. outrageous. Yeah. This is, uh, I'm happy I came. Thank you, Paul. Oh, please. Thank you for the 55 fucking joints I smoked. <laughs> I'm going to be sick again on Tuesday because I can't smoke with people. And pipes, I smoke with everybody. If they were that nice, I have to make them. Uh, Portland. Have to make them yeah, we them. just got done smoking like eight bulls and 17 joints. And that tell them the circle. last, the last. There was, there was one where I'm like holding two joints on one while I have a bowl. It was like being in the eighth grade. I was looking for booze <laughs> farm and shit like that. It was like being in the eighth grade. Yeah. And the first night I was telling Joe, there was 60 people, 40 people, you know, like uh, six groups or like six people. Yeah. And we were smoking and a cop stopped, looked at us, and just kept fucking driving like he tapped out. <laughs> What's he going to do, arrest all 36 of us? Well, I've, I felt like the vibes of the crowd, they felt to me like a real, like a real strong potheads. It was like a strong pothead crowd. Like that might have been like 90% stoners, right? Yeah, it was so crazy. Right? Totally. It was, it was, right? Everybody was crazy. cool as Everyone fuck. Everyone was growing too. And yeah. Yeah. Around, everyone said like, no, we grow out here. We don't have <laughs> like the stores. We just grow, are super gross. Yeah, and apparently they don't give a fuck. They're like not. They're not trying to force this shit at all. Yeah. Like, go ahead, get go with your weed. No yeah, one cares. It's really crazy because the club manager came up to me at 11:30 last night. He goes, guys, I just want to warn you. If you guys did this on Friday and Thursday, tomorrow's going to be completely nuts. And I went to eat with you guys today. I went up to my room and I started thinking about what he said. And it grew in my head like a fucking weed. It actually put too much pressure on me. At 5.30, I was already dressed and showered. Ready to <laughs> That's how crazy I'm getting because my true emotions come out when I do stand-up. When I see people and the first show tonight, usually it's a Christian crowd. On Saturday night, it's the people who have babysitters. These people were fucking nuts. They took the ride. They were eating ass, finger back. They took the ride. <laughs> Joe Rogan said, I went out there to watch him for 10 minutes, and I was listening to you, and I could feel these people. They were in with you. It was a movie. They were watching a movie. It was something, even sitting on the side of this place. So thank you, Paul, and I'm fucking stoned. Work with me. <laughs> you know this is a badass town, man. So in short, this town is... Uh, Unquestionably, the shit. This is one of the best places we've ever performed. One of the sh a short lists of where to move when the apocalypse hits. Portland just shot right the fuck up the charts. This is how fucking badass Portland is. Look what they have. They have a solar powered compactor. A solar. See, this is solar panels on the top. The sunlight powers this fucking thing. You throw the trash in there, and it smashes it up into a nice usable cube. Which, if you were so inclined, perhaps you could use for the construction yeah, of a very biodegradable house. Either way, this is badass shit. Portland's ahead of the curve. 